Hi folks, so I wanted to make some videos to try to explain and summarize the research done by a swath of great botanists on the different sections of the genus Anthurium. Uh, this stuff may seem like endlessly abstract taxonomy to some, but if you're here, you're probably here for a reason. There's a lot of relevance and utility to it as far as knowing which sections are compatible for hybridization or even trying to get an identification on a plant without much contextual backgrounds or, or information about it. Sectional groupings may be able to narrow your search for an identification just based on shared phenotypical attributes that that individual may have in common with others in the section. Uh, I just wanted to add a quick disclaimer before we get into the grid of this video. Uh, botany and taxonomy are constantly evolving fields, so even though there may only be around 18 sections of Anthurium as of the recording of this video, there's a very good possibility that more are discovered in the future. We also have to remember that taxonomy is fundamentally a social construct, which means if you go into nature, there is no set in stone taxonomy. Rather, it's something we as humans invented to try to make sense of the natural world, which means that Botanists may even disagree as to what constitutes a section. For example, you may have one group of botanists who say there are this many sections, and then you may have another group that may say no, there's more sections in that, or there's less sections in that. Neither of these groups are objectively wrong per se, it's just that they have conducted their research with different methodologies and therefore may have gotten different results. Um, now into the kind of topic or main aspect of this video, what is a section? Well, to put it simply, it's a taxonomic rank between the genus and the species. So narrower than the genus level, but not as narrow as the species level. How taxonomists figure out sections is based on clade, which is just a fancy word used in taxonomy that groups organisms based on a common ancestor. So what's the point? Why do botanists and taxonomists need sections? Well, it's all a metric of specificity. Remember that taxonomy isn't something we discover, rather it's something we invented. So for a large genus like Anthurium, there may be a lot of utility in breaking it up into different sections. Uh, now let's talk about some tools that may help you identify almost any Anthurium to a section only using its phenotypic characteristics when referencing you know, various scientific papers. Let's start with some basic vocabulary to help you interpret the sometimes dense jargon that gets used in these scientific papers when describing traits. I'll go over some of those right now, but remember that this is in no means an intensive list. Um, I may post more videos in the future that attempt to do that, but definitely not here. Let's start with the leaf blade. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory, you know, it's just the leaf. Um, petiole is also a word that gets thrown around a lot. A petiole is the stalk that connects the leaf blade to the stem. Um, lobes are the ear-looking things commonly at the top of the leaf blade. Most anthuriums only have two lobes, but there are some anthuriums with fused lobes, like Anthurium peltigurum, and there are also some with many lobes, like Anthurium pedatoradiatum, which is definitely a tongue twister. <laughs> um, a chordate leaf shape is just a leaf blade that resembles a heart in shape. A hastate leaf shape is just a leaf blade that resembles an arrowhead or is triangular in shape. Vernation just means how a leaf emerges from a bud, how it's configured in a bud, etc. Um, the vernation of most anthurium is that the margins of the leaf blade on an emerging leaf are rolled over each other. What we've just gone over is the tip of the iceberg as far as taxonomic jargon goes, but all of it is very easy to figure out with a simple Google search. Um, in the description of this video, I've attached a 1983 paper by doctors Thomas Crote and Richard Sheffer, both of which have done amazing work in this field. Don't be fooled by its date either. It contains a ton of useful information as far as describing different sections in great detail, as well as providing information on the viability of hybrids between sections. I've also attached a 2013 and 2019 paper, both by Thomas Crote and Monica Carlson, 
that takes a deep dive into the phylogeny or the evolutionary history of anthuriums. These papers are pretty dense and may not be the most relevant to someone who's not a researcher, but they're certainly very recent and do a good job correcting some of the mistakes made in the 1983 paper if you're really interested in the nitty gritty aspects of this topic. Um, that's going to be it for this video. Please leave a like and subscribe. Uh, if this video you know, gets enough interest, I may make a series of video outlining each of the 18 sections and their characteristics. But for now, feel free to use the resources I've attached in the description uh, or ask questions in the comments. Uh, and thank you very much for watching. Peace.